This week on the podcast for new all-age comic books for the week of September 5th, you've got the 500-pound gorilla coming back into the graphic novel fray. The 20-ton phototicular dinosaur is awesome. I'll tell you about that. Steven Universe, Zero, Loud House, and much more. Hey, hey, and welcome to Daddy Mojo. It's the podcast where we'll talk about parenting, all-age comic books, toys, and more. Now, here's your host, Trey Burley. Thanks so much for checking out the podcast this week. This is Trey with Daddy Mojo. If you want to reach us anytime, you're welcome to. It's Trey, T-R-E-Y, at daddymojo.net. And every week, we highlight, a, we try to highlight a wide variety of books, comic books, and graphic novels that will be of interest to kids aged five and up. And the up kind of skews the range of, you know what, some some middle school and high school kids may dig this, and even some of you parents will really like it. Some of the better comic books and some of the better graphic novels, that will be your jam. And this week, there's so much variety that even in the podcast, it's like, wow, we've got some Daredevil, got some Dogman, and some other stuff. But the books we couldn't get to, I invite you to check it out uh, over on the website, daddymojo.net, because there are so many, even after listening to the podcast, if you're like, well, you know what, I want a new comic book, but it wasn't here. There are about 15 or 18 out this week, and they're all really diverse, so I invite you to check them out. Let us kick things off with the 500-pound gorilla in graphic novel publishing. Uh, If you have a kid in elementary school... Even middle school, they are bonkers for Dogman. Uh, Dogman, <laughs> Lord of the Fleas, is out. Actually, came out last week. We missed it on this one because of Dragon Con, but it was worth it because Dragon Con was awesome. And we'll tell you much more about that later in a different podcast. But Dogman uh, is from Dave, uh, Dave Pilkey, the guy who did Captain Underpants. Um, Captain Underpants, great series. Dogman is a simpler series. And there's a if you follow any comic book creators on uh, on Twitter or on any social media platform, they have this discussion because some people criticize graphic novels and comic books as a medium for not being a real book. In other words, maybe there are more illustrations than words, so it's not re- it's not a real book. It's just it's a book. It's got a spine and a you know it's got words in it, but it, it doesn't really count as a book. I would disagree with that. However, here's my caveat to Dogman. Kids love it so much. They really go mental over it. Our eight-year-old has been clamoring for this new book, and we're going to pick it up this weekend, Dogman, Lord of the Fleas. Um, Kids love it. They laugh at it, and they read it, and they reread it. And it's because they want to read it that I don't hesitate to, to give it to either of our kids. Here's the other shoe. If we had a 13-year-old and all they were reading was Dogman, then I might say, you know what, this is great, but we need to branch out and maybe get some Rick Reardon or some some other books in there in addition to Dogman, because I still read simple stuff that my wife looks over at me when we're going to sleep and she's, how can you read this juvenile thing that's meant for a middle school person and enjoy it? So I get that pleasure reading. I really do. And that is exactly where Dogman comes into the fray. It's Lord of the Fleas, and it's really reasonably priced. You can look around online and pick it up for $7. If you go to a retail outlet like Target or something, you'll see it on sale for $10. Either way, it's really affordable, and kids 5 and up will love this. First graders, if you think first grade is too young for it, it's not. Because even on the bus at the school bus stop, you'll see those first graders looking at the second grader, saying, what are they reading? Oh, they're reading Dogman? I want to read that. And that's exactly what's happened with us, except with our first grader, it's become Captain Underpants and Dogman, in addition to some other books. Uh, Lord of the Fleas, out this week. Check it out and see what all the madness is about. Halloween just is uh, near, it's around the corner. It really is. And this is, uh, I love this title. Anything that happens regarding The Nightmare Before Christmas will will tell you about because it is such a great movie and it's a classic and it really ages perfectly it really does the monopoly set for nightmare before christmas came out a couple weeks ago and this week has nightmare before christmas zero's journey this is from tokyo pop tokyo pop is they mainly do a lot of manga a lot of manga it's manga 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 all manga all the time but this is a comic book it's a four dollar 3.99 comic book this is a mini series about Zero, 
and Zero. Uh, Zero, of course, is Jack Skellington's dog, the, the bony dog, if you haven't seen the movie, which is criminal. Rent the movie or watch it on Netflix right now. Uh, Zero has gone missing, and Jack is all a flutter trying to figure out where Zero is. Um, it's a great miniseries. The art is perfectly represented and taken from the film The Nightmare Before uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Beautiful stuff. And if you are skeptical of the Tokyo Pop label because you don't really like manga and you don't get it, I can understand that because I spent years in Japan. I still don't get manga. I don't understand the the appeal to it, but kids love it. If you speak to any elementary school or especially middle school librarian, they will tell you that their manga collection, any books in that, get checked out. And they get beaten down because they get checked out so often that they have to reorder them and reorder them. And this graphic novel from Tokyo, from Tokyo Pop, actually, this is a comic book. It'll be a graphic novel in a couple months. This comic book from Tokyo Pop that mainly produces ma- uh, graphic novels and manga will be no exception. It's three ninety nine, and this is issue number three of Nightmare Before Christmas: Zero's Journey. This is a book. I said at the beginning that sometimes we'll mention books because we get a lot of kid lit books, and some of them are fabulous. Some of them are okay, and some are eh, okay, eh, okay, light. This series of books from Workman Press, uh, Workman Publishing, is one of the best series of books that we get. It really is. It's Dinosaur, and Dinosaur is just one incarnation of it. It has a couple books that have come out in the series, like there's been. Uh, Oh my goodness. Jungle and Safari and a couple others, and I can't think of them, but it's the process of the book that makes it so fabulous. It's Dan Kanan and Kathy Woolard. They are the ones behind this. It's created by Dan, written by Kathy Woolard, and it's the lenticular type of photographs. Uh, my old school parents out there, think of your trading cards, your baseball, basketball trading cards, and remember how they would feel kind of a... They would make that sound. I sound like a whack MC. But it's that it's the way you look at it, and according to the light, it moves. And in this case, Dinosaur, I think it has eight, eight pages, eight bigger, eight big pages of dinosaurs that move when you turn the pages. It is beautiful, and it's so in line with the rest of the books in this series that, it, it wow, any of them are all great. They really are, but this is the one that's out this year. Last year, what came out? Wild and Jungle are the ones that we have uh, in our library here. I think Wild is the one that came out last year. It came, had all sorts of wild animals. That was actual photographs. Of course, this being a book about dinosaurs, it's not real photographs, but it's realistically represented dinosaurs that move as you turn the pages. I preface all this to say it's a fabulous book. It's very well constructed. It's got a thick spine, thick pages, and it's very durable. The, uh, the book that we've had from a couple of years ago, Jungle. Jungle we've had a couple of years, and it's held up very nicely. We take it uh, to the elementary school when we read books there. The kids love seeing the animals move. So it's been to countless rooms. It holds up. I say all this because it costs $26. And for a kid's book, I, it's not a kid's book, but for a book that kids will really enjoy, phrase it like that, for a book that kids will really enjoy, that's a lot of money. However, the kids will ridiculously enjoy this book. I teach English to kids in China. I do. That's my side gig. That's how I pay some bills. Anyway, um, I show this book to them when I teach and when we talk about animals or when we talk about anything, and it blows them away. It really is. You must, if even if you don't buy it, just go to the bookstore. That's right, that bookstore, that archaic brick-and-mortar thing down in the corner that you used to curse and say, ah, blah, you drove out the mom-and-pop stores. Now you praise them. Rightly so, because they're still selling some great books. Check out Dinosaur. Just look at it, and you'll buy it. I promise. It's Dinosaur, fabulous book from Workman Publishing, And it's uh, one of the best books you'll see this week. Guarantee it. Kitten Construction. Kittens made the internet, didn't they? Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But kittens, they they, they populate the internet and they make it a whole lot more fun. In this one, it's an original graphic novel from first, second books. 
It's the Kitten Construction Company. Meet the House Kittens. Say that without smiling. Um, this is an original graphic novel. The star of this book is Marmalade. She is a kitten, and she's a little fed up because she's so darn cute that people don't take her seriously as an architect. So she teams up with some other kittens to form the Kitten Construction Company. I know, the, the surly, kind of smarmy, sardonic side of you may say, Oh, I don't like where this is going. This sounds very preachy and very much kind of, where's my pink hat for my head? Uh, but it's not like that. This is just good, clean fun. It's the Kitten Construction Company. It does have a lesson in there, but it's wrapped in cuteness. It's wrapped in cuteness, fun, and a, a graphic novel that kids who are six and up will want to read. And I'll say kids, be it boys or girls. I mean, obviously, they yeah, kittens. It may skew more towards girls, and it might, but even our six-year-old would want to read this just because of the art and the way it's presented. It's going to be a little difficult for those younger kids to read. It'll have some sight words, so if you're looking for a read-alone book where kids don't need any help reading it, I would say ages seven and up. For Kitten Construction Company, Meet the House Kittens, an original graphic novel, buy it online for about 13 bucks. Go to that bookstore. Get a 10% off coupon. It'll cost around 18 bucks. Either way, it's a fabulous graphic novel. Let's skew just a little bit older. I'm going to say middle school, those 12-year-old kids. Maybe even a little younger. But for me, 12 years old. If I were a 12-year-old kid and I was presented with this, I would go mental and I would spend my $3.99 to buy it. This is James Bond Origin. And when we were about that age, about 10, 11, 12... We were knee-deep, knee-deep in reading all of the James Bond screenplays because it was, what, the late 70s, mid-70s. I was reading anything I'd get my hands on. And a lot of that was the, the movie adaptations to James Bond films because I couldn't see the films because God, they didn't have DVDs then. There were no videos. It was just kind of, okay, this is it. Moonraker was in the theaters, and now it's not. So read the book. And then Blockbuster came along and you could rent anything and everything. This goes back to the books, though. The books were great. We still have a couple of them in the closet. James Bond Origin is about the early, early James Bond. I mean, like the teenage James Bond. I don't mean that in a campy way. This, is, this has roots in the real-life accounts of Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming was a naval intelligence officer for England in the early 40s. And some of his stories, some of his inspirations, might have led him to write the stories that he did create for James Bond. This, however, is, is a work of fiction with some bit in reality. It's from Jeff Parker, Bob Q, and John Cassidy, and it's from Dynamite Entertainment. I say ages 12 and up because it's going to be real. It's not really fantastical superhero exploits. And it's going to have some war-type violence and situations. But James Bond, classic, love this and look forward to checking out James Bond Origin. It's a miniseries from Dynamite Entertainment. A series that ended kind of reminds us of this, a, a television series. This one, though, is Steven Universe Harmony, number two. This is a, a, a miniseries. That kind of shoots off from the Steven Universe ongoing comic book from Boom Studios. In this one, Steven continues to hold on to the Harmony Corps, and it's up to Amethyst to take over his responsibilities. Yeah, including band practice. Check that out. Uh, hey, speaking of which, Momocon, boom, Momocon, plan ahead for 2019. If you're not down with Momocon, just do a quick search for it. Basically, it's an anime, manga, comic book, younger skewing con in Atlanta. Happens every year. It's grown exponentially every year. In 2019, I know they're going to have some of the voices from Steven Universe at Momocon. Wow. So if you're a fan of Steven Universe, check that out for next year. And even now, hey, why not check out this comic book? Because it's, it's very close to the television show. It's got the same heart and the same soul. And I think you'll dig it. Upper Elementary, through middle school, you'll love it. Steven Universe Harmony, number two, out this week. 
The Loud House. Now, this this comic, this cartoon skews younger. It does, because it's silly, but kids love it. Our eight-year-old loves it. The six-year-old loves it. It was a little hard. I'll, I'll try to go back in the time machine and say when the six-year-old was five, it might have been a little too much for him just because there was a lot of manicness. <sighs> However, The Loud House has a series of comic book, a series of graphic novels out from Paper Cuts. And these are original graphic novels. And this one, uh, Family Tree. It's a new graphic novel from Paper Cuts. Uh, Loud House 4. This is a series of shorts. So it's not really an ongoing thing. There, there are some short bits. It's not, it's not one graphic novel of one story. And it's from Nickelodeon. Uh, the show is from Nickelodeon on paper cuts. Who's this going to be good for? Ages four through eight. So, you know, if you're a four-year-old or you have a four-year-old, it's going to be something you got to read with them to eight years old. And the reason this skews younger than the show is that's just the way that the printed word often goes against the televised show, kind of like The Simpsons. You may not want a nine-year-old watching The Simpsons. I understand that. However, a nine-year-old reading Simpsons comics, oh, it's perfect. However, bad news for that. (laughs) Simpsons comics is coming to an end in October. Uh, We have that coming up in the monthly podcast about comic books to look for, and one of those is going to be that that sad, sadly, to to announce the, the last issue. Makes me sad. This one, though, is ongoing, 62 pages in Loud House 4, Family Tree. It's an original graphic novel from Paper Cuts. Thanks for listening to Daddy Mojo. Be sure to tune in next time. For more information on any of the things we talked about today, just check out the website, daddymojo.net, or hit us up at Daddy Mojo on social media.